Oof, I'm looking rough. Uh, all the same. I am not impressed. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too, if you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about, don't be alone. So, welcome everyone to the first in what I hope to make sort of a regular series on this channel. Um, the I'm not impressed side of things. Now, that's pretty much been what my channel has been thus far, but I can't help but feel as though if I give it a bit of format and structure, maybe I'll stick with it and make it a really regular thing. Because, after all, I mean, the key to longevity is regularity, or so the octogenarians at the nursing home tell me. So, what am I not impressed with today? Well, protests. Yeah, protests. I'm. Uh, no, I, uh. Now, this comes after my own experience, almost a decade of actually um, making things like protests and marches and rallies and all the, the activism stuff. That was my bread and butter. That was my living for a good long while. And for a long time, I did hold very dear and close to my heart the concept of uh, civil disobedience and protests and demonstrating against the powers that be. I, I was down with it. I was all about fighting the power. And I really still am, except modern protests are kind of shit. So what's on the ticket right now? What's the big hot, uh, hot button item we've got going out? Well, the NFL, of course. Yeah, that's right. Um, all of those professional game players, those multi-millionaires <laughs> who play a game that you may very well just get together with your buddies on a Sunday and play. Yeah, these guys have decided that they're the new front line in the hashtag resistance. Now, initially this all started with Colin Kaepernick refusing to actually stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and instead taking a knee. Which still kind of confuses me because, I mean, if you, especially if you're a Game of Thrones fan, you know... Taking the knee, <laughs> it's what you do when you're, when, you're, uh, when, you're, when you're devoting yourself, dedicating yourself, swearing your fealty and allegiance uh, to a person and a house and specifically a banner. And what's a flag if not a banner? Now, this all started with Kaepernick and it was part of a sort of Black Lives Matter solidarity thing because this multi-millionaire professional athlete somehow saw himself as being oppressed. Okay. But it, it seems to have morphed recently, more into a stand against the evil that is Donald Trump. Now, I am the furthest thing from a fan of that blustering, simpering buffoon of a president that we have. But all the same, I fail to see how a whole bunch of multimillionaire entertainers taking a stand against the president is really actually setting out any specific messages in terms of what needs to be done to heal the wounds in this country. If anything, it seems like a showy and obnoxious piece of uh, political theater carried out by people who really, like most activists, have nothing more than a desire to feel really self-righteous about what they're doing before getting back to their own self-interests. And it's completely fair. Now, I don't want to come across and seem as though I'm, I'm saying that they shouldn't be doing this, or maybe that we should all boycott the NFL. Personally, I've been boycotting the NFL my entire life. I find professional sports in general uh, to be just uh, so dull. Uh, incredibly dull. I would rather watch Anne of Green Gables than an entire season of Patriots football. Let me get that out of the way. Uh, period pieces and Jane Eyre shit. More enticing and enthusiastic about those things than I am about professional sports. But I do understand that there are just millions upon millions of diehard dedicated fans, some of whom have gone as far as getting tattoos or uh, decorating themselves and their homes and their vehicles and their lives with sports paraphernalia of their favorite teams. And I understand that professional sports means a great deal uh, to a great many people. Now, when it comes to the protests themselves of taking the knee during the national anthem or standing with your heart over your hand and how everyone is expected to side up on one side or another in all of this, 
I really can't help but find myself bored with the entire debate. Now, this could be because while we all pay attention to these multimillionaires who are just kneeling during a song and uh, taking that as the big hot-button political issue, especially while our own president spends days at a time tweeting endlessly about it as though it was the central focus of his administration at the moment, um, that while all of this is going on, the U.S. protectorate of Puerto Rico is currently mostly without power. Um, it's flooded, they're without food. It's a bit like a Katrina situation. And yet private charities seem to be doing most of the heavy lifting, which I'm sure my libertarian fans are probably thrilled with. But all the same, you would like to think that a government and a society in general who's supposed to be woken with it, paying attention all the time to all the big hot-button issues going on, you would think that a U.S. protectorate being flooded out without power, without food, without water, <laughs> with the exception of the seawater, you'd think that might, might, make a bit more of an impact on the public psyche than, again, a handful of multi-millionaire game players taking a symbolic and ceremonial stand against a nebulous and ill-defined enemy personified in the president, you would think. But this isn't solely about the NFL. I don't want you going to think that this is some sort of strictly news item, hot topic sort of uh, horse shit. No. In general, protests don't impress me. And I'm not simply saying that I'm personally just <laughs> over it. As much as the protests themselves have become a function of banality, really. What we've got going on, it seems, it would seem routinely and continuously, is one protest after another, consistently demanding our attention for whatever hot issue that they might be on. But they're coming so regularly, and so obnoxiously, and so aggressively, that I myself cannot be fucking bothered to even look at what it is they actually give a shit about, because wading through the mountains of horse shit and rhetoric which come before that point, should a point even actually exist, is just so exhausting that I can't be bothered. Now what am I talking about here? Well, let's, uh, let's consider the Women's March. That's a fun one. Now that's been going on not quite as hot as it's been, a little bit more on the social media side than the really flooding the street side of things, but between the fact that it seems to be focused mostly on vagina hats and praising convicted killers and terrorists, I have to wonder how it is that the American left has come to embrace this movement, as it was, so thoroughly, given how utterly insipid the entire thing really is. Now, when I say it's insipid, I think I'm being charitable, to be completely honest with you. People like Linda Sarsour, who themselves should, by all rights, be moving off to a place like uh, Qatar or Saudi Arabia, so that she can experience the true women's liberation that comes with being forced to wear a hijab, being denied basic human rights, and being beaten or sometimes imprisoned or killed simply for being the lippy feminist that we know that Saudis really love. I'm still waiting for this cockroach to do this. And yet somehow she still has become a centerpiece in the resistance movement. Maybe this is really where I find the, uh, the lowest level of impressed with, where I am the most let down overall. Donald Trump is genuinely a fucking nightmare of a president. He is a blustering buffoon, as I've said before and will continue to say until I find something better. He is more concerned with his public image than he is how he's actually running the country. He is holding rallies as though he's still on campaign, trying to reaffirm himself and shore up whatever red hat MAGA base that might be out there that thinks he's the god emperor after all, that he is in fact the best thing for America. Even though there is not a single iota, not a, not a shred of actual stately decorum or political acumen to the man whatsoever. Now, I'll give him this much. He does have the perfect assassination or impeachment insurance in Mike Pence. Because if you think that Donald Trump, as a whatever brand of Trump-style conservative he might be, if, he, if, if you as a liberal or a progressive find Trump's conservatism to be problematic or bothersome, imagine what a Pence administration would actually look like. 
Now, a while back, I did a video listing out a series of reasons that I didn't think liberals had to worry about Trump all that much. And by and large, much of what I said then does seem to kind of be applying. Now, the optimistic sides of things, not so much, but the pragmatic and practical sides of it, pretty much on the ball. Trump has been continually and routinely alienating himself from Congress in general as well as the Republican Party. His own base is increasingly becoming a very marginal sort of subsection of this modern conservatism that seems to think that simply chest thumping and tweeting with the right tags is really a valid form of political activism. Now, given what the opposition, the hashtag resistance, is ultimately up to, I can't say I really blame them. In truth, the fact that Trump got elected and the fact that they're still standing does say a bit about where things fall in terms of them versus their opposition. But all the same, for liberals and progressives who can't wait to see Trump impeached or assassinated or any other amount of inane horse shit like that, Imagine what it would be like to have a man like Mike turning fruits into vegetables, Pence. Mike, like the man juice, get the wrath of Zeus, Pence. Um, I can't remember any of the others, but a man like Mike Pence, an, an, an outright, basically homophobic, Bible-thumping, uh, trad-con nightmare in many senses, who, beyond his ideology poses a threat to liberalism and progressivism in that he is a career politician. And that's not just to say, oh, he's just another hack. No, 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 this is actually to say that this is a man who knows how to work with legislatures. He knows how to get shit done. Because he's been doing it for a long time. Like him or hate him, the fact that he's still around says a lot about his capabilities. Now, if you took Trump out of the equation and found yourself with a Pence administration, well, then I imagine that the overall themes and veracity of these current resistance protests would have two choices, either to ratchet it up to 11 and go full balls to the wall for every second that you can before you become completely irrelevant in the eyes of the public, or hang it up and hope shit gets better down the road and that you find a window you can jump in through. These modern protests, one after another, Black Lives Matter, the Women's March, even the Science March, which itself came, became a hodgepodge of intersectionality and other identity politics horseshit, which has been dragging the left down for quite a while now. All of these protests and their regularity and their frequency and the fact that they look to do oftentimes more than simply create a scene mildly inconvenience people, thus inspiring them to investigate and find out what it was all about, but actually flat out pose some kind of a threat or deterrence or some sort of um, blockade of some kind to not just disrupt people's average days, but to put them on hold entirely until their shrieks and cries and rhetoric and messages are delivered via really terribly made signs and Harry Potter comparisons. These protests are counterproductive. They're not just annoying, they're not just dumb, they don't just elevate terrible fucking people and place them up as heroes because their rhetoric against the man is strong enough. They're counterproductive, and they're counterproductive because they are annoying. The idea of a protest or a march or a rally or any sort of political event like this isn't really necessarily, unless it's a campaign style event, isn't necessarily meant to uh, rile up and mobilize and motivate any kind of base as much as it is to draw attention to a given issue. Hopefully a specific and singular issue, something people can actually take the time to look into, learn about, and hopefully, in the course of their looking into it, look into what it is you have to say about it to find out why your objections were so strong to this issue or issues that it led you and others out into the streets to block up several lanes of traffic, perhaps, or just to pose a big scene causing news cameras and helicopters to focus right on you and your event. When they're curious about why you're doing this big demonstration, then they're curious to go and look at exactly what it is you're demonstrating about. But if your demonstrations come down to nothing more than uh, white men are the devil, or men are all rapists, or Donald Trump is bad, well, then you are actually lacking 
the specific nuances of policy proposals and arguments that people would actually probably be looking for if they were curious enough to find out what your fucking problem was. Protests these days are self-indulgent, self-righteous exercises in virtue signals. Now, if there are, and I'm sure there are, legitimate movements out there trying their best to actually advocate on behalf of what they see to be the best solution to certain issues, and they're perhaps opposing or supporting given government entities or institutions or establishments which provide or uh, promote those particular viewpoints, the saddest thing here is that legitimate protests with legitimate causes, with activists who know what they're doing, are bound to be overshadowed endlessly by these hysterical screeching madmen who are running out into the streets with stupid hats, promoting things such as vagina nail jewelry, and then calling anybody who is not already within their ranks the enemy of freedom and justice and all of it. Protests are going to become irrelevant and redundant very soon if things continue going the way they've been. And as they continue to gravitate more towards the showy multi-millionaires or the large marches with nebulous, ill-defined messages that are altogether difficult, if not impossible, to understand, then the irrelevance of public demonstration on a political level will not only doom the activists in the world, but will do a very good deal of damage to democracy itself. These are tools which should be used wisely, with intent, with direction, and with a straightforward purpose. But right now all they are is the self-righteous and zealous chest thumpings of upset activists who probably range in motivation from genuinely caring about something that they'll never get to actually talk about with anyone up to people who just want to be able to say that they were there in that hip, radical, rebellious time, and that they took part. Because, really, what's better than being able to say you helped make history, even if you didn't do anything at all? So, thanks for sitting through all of this I'm first in my series. I figured protests would be a good place to start. And as such, I will say that um, as it comes... And as they happen, these modern protests, I'm not impressed. And if I'm not impressed, <laughs> busier people than me are even less impressed. So as always, thank you for stopping by. If you liked the video, give it that thumbs up. Leave a comment to let me know what you think. Blah, 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 blah. And in the Patreon link below. Also, there's other ways to support the channel. If I'm an asshole or if I'm right, if you have experience with protests and activism yourself, or if you don't but you're just curious or have some observations to offer, all of that shit is comment section right down below. Go on, give me your best, give me your worst, it's fine. Make sure you're subscribed, make double sure you're subscribed because I don't fucking trust YouTube and you shouldn't either. And all that being the case, well, catch you Sunday on Saints. And fuck right off. Bye. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too, if you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating. If you can dream and not make dreams your master. If you can think and not make thoughts your aim. If you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two impostors just the same. If you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken and stoop and build them up with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss, and lose and start again your beginnings, and never bring a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sing to serve your turn long after they're gone, and so hold on when there's nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on.